Russia recently put out this recruitment campaign for their military that was all about being a man. You don't want to be a taxi driver. You want to be a real man and join the Russian military. But the shocking part about that recruitment ad was how much money Russian soldiers were initially making. And the number down here is $2,495 a month. The reason this was shocking for a lot of people is because that would mean that a Russian soldier is making more money than a U.S. soldier. Now, is this true? Does this make sense? In this video, we are going to talk about the economics of a modern military and how it can be a little misleading, especially in Russia's case. My name is T-Sply, let's get to the video. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand is the economics behind running a military. And the Romans were the ones who truly perfected this idea of paying a professional military, but also taxing your professional military. Now, like modern militaries, these Roman soldiers right here, they will get their initial entry pay, they might get some bonus pay, they might not even be a Roman soldier and join as an auxiliary unit. But here was the basic concept, not only are you going to tax your soldiers, you're also going to create standardization, which means all of these soldiers are going to get their issued gear, but they're also technically going to pay for that gear. Now, historians debate this tax rate was anywhere from 30 to 50%, which means that a soldier's food would be covered. Um, if his armor got damaged, that would be covered because that's coming out of his taxes and the whole military is essentially paying for itself. Now, get ready because this is a little controversial. The Roman military was a massive investment, and of course, the Romans wanted to get an ROI, a return on investment. And essentially what that means is if the Romans were going to tax their own soldiers, that means the Romans better be making some advancements on territories, capturing some new land so we can tax some new people. And here's where things get a little controversial, because some people say that is the purpose of modern militaries, to capture new ground, to capture new resources, to make new friends. Not everything is necessarily done on a battlefield. Maybe you might just want to push your weight a little bit. Now, in the Russian recruitment video, they were talking about specific recruitments they wanted. They said they were looking for sappers, and I was a sapper, which translates to combat engineer, and they were looking for drivers. And the one thing I noticed is that these two specific jobs were rather intense. They were dangerous. They were very important to the battlefield, and Russia needs them. Now, there's a few implications here. This means Russia could technically give you a bonus if you sign up for this specific position, and the U.S. military does this all the time. I get emails all the time saying, we will give you $10,000 if you join the whatever National Guard and we'll make you a sergeant. So again, this is not uncommon practice. We can't just put Russia on blast here because the United States does this and Russia does this, but here's where things are a little more different. When Russia initially started their whole conflict with Ukraine, they wanted to stop taxing their troops. And again, this is common practice for the U.S. military. You don't get taxed when you're in a combat zone. And this is a good thing for the Russian soldier, if you will. This is good that they're not going to take money out of his pocket. But again, we run into some more issues. There have been many reports of Russian troops not actually getting paid, and this is coming from families, and that could be anything from bonuses not being received, promises that they said were going to happen for the troops, and this is not a good look for Russia. Because the Russian government has also been promising really big payouts for troops in Ukraine and for the regular Russian troops throughout the world. And this, as the news headline says, creates a massive problem, because if families are saying that troops are not getting paid, look, Russians are not dumb. They talk to one another. They are really a cohesive civilization behind the scenes. Whether or not they can put things out in the public, they know what's really going on. You have to understand that even if Russian troops are not getting paid, they can't say anything. And you can't publicly say anything in Russia either because this is how serious it's getting in Russia. And I was very surprised this was not as popular as it should have been, this headline. Russia fines a woman $500 for calling Ukrainian President Zelensky handsome, which means you can't say anything. Whether you're joking or whether you're being serious, you can't say anything in Russia. Now, as far as this $2,495 a month, that number might be accurate. You might not get paid, though, as a Russian soldier, and you also might pay a lot of taxes. You might have to pay for your gear. You got to pay for your food. So again, this number is a little misleading, but that's not only true for the Russian military. It's also true for the U.S. military. Now, as I was doing research for this video, one thing I noticed for a lot of U.S. military members, whether it's a veteran or active, your pay is either enough or it's not enough. And what I mean by that is some people come from 
from literally nothing. They were homeless. So getting paid anything, getting fed anything was awesome. And for others, it just is what it is. Like, you know, you can have a better life, um, whether it's working at McDonald's, working at Walmart, your life might be a little more better because having total freedom is worth the money you'll get paid in the military. And I'll sort of explain that in this video right here. So let's say you're 17, single, no kids, no mortgage. All right, let's come over here. United States Marine Corps, E1. You're going to be this for at least a year. You're going to make in $1,650 per month. You're going to be getting 700 every two weeks. I said 700 every two weeks because you got to take out money for child taxes. You're going to be working standard. And again, he did mention you do get taxed. Most I, I'm so dumb. I didn't even realize this. And this is back in 2012. I didn't know you still get taxed in the U.S. military. I thought, well, we're technically fighting for the country. We don't get taxed. No, you get taxed. 5.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday. That's 11 hours per day, 55 hours per week. Now, let's say McDonald's right now, they have signed. And that is true. In the U.S. military, you are working a lot. By the way, I'll put this guy's uh, link in the description if you want to go check him out. Um, you work a lot, and some people say the pay that you get is not technically fair. But again, you we did sign up for it. For working 12, you're getting 12 per hour. You're going 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's seven hours per day, 35 hours per week. That's 420 per week and $1,680 per month. 1680 1650 55 hours. And yeah, that's always been the comparison. Um, I'm just going to throw... I'm not throwing any shade at this guy at all. Um, I don't even know. This guy is probably a really good dude. Um, the comparison with the whole McDonald's thing, I never thought it was fair because we need fast food workers. Um, and I've heard some people love working at McDonald's. It is what it is. But yeah, that's always... When you look at it, uh, when you compare it, a McDonald's employee does make more money on paper than a U.S. soldier. And here's the reason why I say on paper. Now, here's a great friend of mine, uh, Green Beret Chronicles. Love this guy. He was a first sergeant in Special Forces. He just retired. But he talks about the bonuses you get as a soldier and how this can sort of add up for the regular soldier. So if you're just that regular private and you start to get all these specialty pays will go through, you can start to make some good money. Your first pay is going gonna, is gonna to be hazardous duty pay all right or if you want to jump out of airplanes off the bat you'll get 150 dollars airborne pay guys for airborne you can add 150 dollars to your base pay second pay you can add to your base pay is going to be free fall all right or halo pay that's going to be a additional 75 dollars at military dive that's going to be an additional 215 Okay, now look, I understand that these are very specific and really typically for special operations. But again, nonetheless, there are opportunities, even starting from a young private to where you can get to these bonus programs and you can get to these elite units where you start to make more money. And not only that, within the U.S. military, you don't get taxed if you go to a combat zone. So this would actually be how much money you make as a private if you do deploy. And again, you start adding these bonuses. And the U.S. military is really good about adding bonuses. Combat bonuses, airborne bonuses, um, linguist bonuses. There's a lot of money you can be making. And that's regardless if you're a driver or a sapper in the Russian military, as they say. The U.S. military does give you these bonuses, and when you sign a contract, they have to pay the money. That's why I find it really funny that Russia was promising not to tax the troops if you go and fight in Ukraine, but then they pass a law saying, oh, you cannot say anything bad about us, you cannot discredit us, otherwise you go to jail, and then we're not going to pay you. Now look, are there Russian soldiers who are making good money? Probably, especially if they're Spetsnaz or they're in some sort of specialty unit. Yes, most likely. Again, common practice. If you've been in longer in an organization, you'll make more money. Russia is no different. But on paper comparison, the E1 private to the E1 private in Russia, the U.S. soldier is definitely making more money. They're getting better benefits and they have more opportunity to create a career out of their advancement. Whereas in the Russian military, it's a one and done deal. Go to Ukraine. We won't tax you. Once you come back, you're done. Uh, no more of this bonus programs and you might not even get paid. So again, U.S. soldiers are making more money than Russian soldiers, without a doubt. And there's more trust for the U.S. military, believe it or not. So anyway, leave your comments and opinions down below. Um, I just wanted to do this simple breakdown because a lot of people will see things on paper and be like, ah, I knew they were making more money, but that's not always true. Again, leave your comments and opinions down below. My name is T-Supply, and we'll see you later.